Anybody else? Yes, please. Yeah, um, I think we need to ask the compliance committee for some recommendations. I've been now to three meetings. And there seems to be a real misunderstanding in the community about the authority to assess fines for violations of various things. And this is only going to get worse now that summer's coming and we're going to start issuing citations for is issues related to the lake. Um, and there's a lot of animosity about the fact that somebody can not stop at a stop sign and a month later receive a certified letter saying you didn't stop and then get assessed $50. Um, I think we need to ask the Compliance Committee about you know, what's our goal here and what is the best way to address that goal. Um, because right now, we, just have a, we have a lot of really angry people who come every time, and I, I try to explain that our folks can't stop people because they don't have the authority um, as policemen, you know, to stop people. That was, that's an insurance issue for the association. But I mean, there, there really is a, such a delay between the time of the occurrence and the, um, the fine. Also, you know, like, there's no consideration, and I know we can't do this because we're not a, 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 a police um, authority, but there's no consideration given to whether this is the first time somebody's ever had an incident of such kind driving, um, as there is often if you're stopped um, on a public road. Is the concern the delay time? That's one. That's one concern, and also I think we need to do a better job of communicating with the membership the safety issues here and why we issue um, issue violations and that we are issuing them. You know, that there are people checking to see if people are stopping at stop signs and now we're talking, you know, the, the patrol's asking for a radar gun. You know, we could get issues related to speeding. Um, and I, I think that, that there's really a misunderstanding on the part of the community what our authority is in this area. I, I, I think you make some really good points, especially about the delay and getting notice to the owners. I think it's, it's unfair and the way to solve that is two, twofold. You could you should video the incident, you should provide a notice within 24 hours of the event so that they have some forward notice and, and prepare you to, to appeal it if they, if they choose. But I think you make good points, and we do need to move on both of those. Ray, anyway, this is all under your control. Yeah. Well, this has well, nothing to do with complaints. Already, already this is between you and Zeb. We've already discussed it. And we're going to make it happen. That's easy to fix. Okay. Ray just said, if, if that's not the issue, it's the delay time between the occurrence and the notice. I think Ray just committed to fix that. If there's more, then let's worry about more. Well, I think there's more. I think that there are a lot of people in the community who do not agree, and I've discussed this with numerous people, that said, you know, if I got a, I've talked to friends who said, if I got a citation for $50, I wouldn't pay it. And, and I think we're seeing that we have a lot of issues here of people who aren't paying it. So and we need to communicate with the, the community why we're doing this and why it's necessary. I would say you're absolutely correct, but if that's not the compliance community that needs to do that. We have rules and regulations out there about compliance, of which the compliance committee is at the end of the whole process. Okay. Before all that is the office and the staff. The rules are very plain. They specify what they are. The Properties Owner Act specifies exactly what the citations are. Um, but I would certainly agree there's, there shouldn't be any more than a 24-hour at the most, 48, if you put it in the mail, by the time somebody gets a citation. Citations were originally put together, and we did them back several years ago, to be given. And they started out with a lake, and in most cases, if there's a violation on the lake, the citation is in fact supposed to be handed to the person. Ideally, that's what you do with, with a car issue also, but it is more difficult. But certainly at the end of the shift or at the end of the day, those things, there's a separate form that goes to the individual, those go in the mail the next day. It has nothing to do with the compliance committee. So. Pat's also quite right on another point, that this is not the compliance issue, the uh, um, committee's issue, this is a board issue, because the board uniquely defines the rules. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and we have to find the rules very uh, carefully. They're all very well published. Do you think we need a communication piece to, to tell our members that where the rules are, how to find them, how to understand them, and to remind them that we're really serious? If you commit a violation on the lake, if you commit a safety violation on the roads, we're quite serious about enforcing the rules yeah, with, I, with the financial penalty. I really think we need that because um, there's a lot of ill feeling about this and, and, and the point that we've tried to make to people is the rules are the rules and you know if you don't stop at a, so a stop sign you've made a violation. Um, so I think we do need a better better communication, maybe address it in a president's letter or an article or something in the newsletter. How about a separate article in the newsletter? There, there are two articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one mm -hmm. recently that I wrote. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't hurt to do it every quarter. I, I, think, I think you have to sign it. I do think you And maybe, uh, I, I think we, we've, or, we've ordered a sign that uh, roving patrol will put behind their vehicle and then enforcing traffic. And I think the biggest uh, objective here should be deterrence. We don't want to issue citations, we want to deter. We don't want it to happen in the first place. So I think with a sign informing people as they pass in a highly visible area and intersection, telling them that we are enforcing traffic. <coughs> I think that's one way. Uh, I agree, John, that you should probably do the newsletter uh, every month until we can get home. Do do Duane, since this was related to the compliance committee, uh, although not, not directly their responsibility, and since you're the liaison, could you possibly do something for the newsletter in the next couple of months? that talks about this, this whole process, talks about the compliance committee, talks about safety violations which are different than compliance violations and they can handle quite differently. And, and just let people understand the difference between them and, and how, how we process the two types of violations. Sure. That'd be great. Okay. Yes, please. I hesitate to bring this up, but uh, we seem to be discussing that the board is in charge of the procedures. We establish how things are done. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Um, and I remember when I got on the board almost two years ago, I hoped that it would be a kinder, gentler community. And by that, I mean uh, we would strive to treat neighbors as neighbors. Has anybody on the board other than me received a letter from the Architectural Committee? after requesting something, and then they turn it down. Does anybody else experience that process? Anybody else? Yeah, I, I did a couple years ago. Few years ago. Okay. Here's, here's what I've experienced. And this is not having anything to do with my individual situation. I'll be with that. I feel like if we're going to be a kinder, gentler, gentler community, if somebody submits something architectural, and for whatever reason, it has to be denied. Rather than just sending out what I felt was a nasty, attacking, inaccurate letter, a little conversation would have gone a long way. And if it were my neighbor, I would hope, we've got a man on payroll. He could pick the phone up, call him, and say, we have a problem we need to discuss with you regarding your recent request. When can we get together and talk in the backyard? Now, I understand everything's got to be put in writing. I don't deny that. And after that conversation, everything can be put in writing. But to me, that's a much more neighborly way to go about things, to find out what the facts are before architectural starts sending out misinterpretations of what they observe. That's all I have to say. And I think it's up to us if we want to change that procedure, because they'll just keep doing it the way they've been doing it. Okay, so you think that the process that we're using is inappropriate. Yes. Okay. Robin, can you can you take some time to review with Steve this particular circumstance and see if you'd like to recommend both to the board and to the architectural committee a change in how that's done. Sure. Thank you. We tried to catch up. Okay. 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 Okay